Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and I'm also here today representing my Etsy store, Vintage Camp and Trail. Now, recently I went through a revamp on my store, so I have taken all of the merchandise down that was on that store, and I've been building inventory to relaunch that store, if you will. That store is a couple years old now, maybe three years old even. Um, but I've taken everything off of there that was still standing on the page that wasn't selling. And I have been collecting things and picking things along the way on every trip I do for a long time now. And I have stacks and stacks of stuff I need to get rid of on Etsy. I have probably 50 cold handle skillets sitting here. I have a stack of probably 15 just six inch skillets right here. I've got eight inch, I've got seven inch, I've got every brand, cold handle, national, belt nap, wagon wheels. I have um, unnamed, unmarked ones. I have enamel wear. I have the heavy steel never breaks. I've got coffee pots. I've got probably 25 or 30 cowboy coffee cups here. I have an absolute pile of silverware, silverware, Civil War, silverware. Well, that's a tongue twister. Um, and lots and lots of other small things. I've got some antique gun cleaning things, rods, kits in the box, things like that to put on there as well. And I'm hoping to get all of this stuff put on there today, but I thought I'd give you just a little sneak peek pan with the camera real fast and some of this stuff. Talk about a couple cool pieces with you real quick like. And all of this stuff is going to be re-shot, re-inventoried, and relaunched this coming weekend. Um, I've got a young man that's going to work with me now as a partner that's going to do the packing and the shipping. So all I really have to do is the picking, the cataloging, the cleanup work, and things like that. And then he's going to, in turn, pack and ship the stuff for me. So that's going to allow me to pay a lot more attention to that store where I was getting drug in so many different directions for so long that it was really hard for me to pay really close attention to it. However, I have a ton of inventory to put on it, and it's time to get it done because it's taking up room in my sheds. Okay, so we're going to get all this stuff up on the site this weekend. Fair prices, you know, considering what I have to go through to get it. The gas, the mileage, the driving, the walking around, the picking, some of the cleanup and things like that. And I will kind of grade this stuff on my Etsy site for you. What I'll do is I'll use a one to five scale. Number one being the best it could possibly be, almost like new old stock. Something like this six inch skillet that looks like it's never even been used right here. And this red is natural. It came that way when it was purchased. You can see that the red goes all the way around the clamp on piece that goes on that cold handle skillet. So it was made this way and it's a new old stock skillet. So this would be a number one. And I really don't have anything that would be a number five here. Well, let's just say something like this. Here's a Snow King baking powder, which is a very rare brand, but the skillet's not in perfect shape. I haven't cleaned it up. So I'd probably call that a three. And I give it a three because it's a very rare brand. And then we'll just have everything set up like that so it's in certain grades so you understand why the price are where they are. And if you don't want something that's as good a quality or as nice, or maybe you want to clean it up a little bit better, then you'll get a little cheaper price on it as well. And that's what we're going to do. We're still going to maintain free shipping on the site. So bear in mind that part of what you're paying for that is also paying for shipping and packaging and things like that when you are paying a little bit more than you might pay somewhere else. Think about the fact you're not going to be paying shipping as well. So let's walk through some of this stuff and look at what I got that's interesting, and then we'll go from there, guys. Thanks. All right, so bear in mind, you're pretty much seeing this stuff as found, okay? So some of the stuff is dirty. You can see it's a little rusted up and needs to be cleaned. And I may put some stuff on the site and call it like grade four. That is definitely something you could clean up. There's no doubt that number 44 would clean up really, really easy. So with this cold handle with some vinegar and a wire brush, and you'd have like a brand new skillet. You could make that thing look like that one pretty, pretty quick if you were trying. So I may not clean some of this stuff up and sell it at a lower price. I don't know yet, but you know, you got some of this stuff is like new old stock, like I said, with this one here. Now this is a number 39 and 39 is a six inch skillet. A 39, this is a 39. You can see it says 39 on that one. This banner is also a six inch skillet. You've got a national right here that's actually not marked, but it's a 39 and a half. It's a seven inch skillet. Those are more rare. Okay, you see this is a 39 and this is a 39 and a half and a 40 is your 8 inch skillet. This is a 7 inch and it's the same size as the Snow King. Every Snow King baking powder skillet I ever found was a 39 and a half. 
and I've got plenty of those cold handles in that thing. There's another cold handle, another cold handle, another cold handle in the six inch. There's a six inch that is just enamel wear with no label on it at all, black enamel wear. There's another seven inch in deluxe, which that's fairly rare as well to find a seven inch in deluxe. Those are the only three seven inch skillets I have right now, I believe, without going through this whole pile. But I've got nationals and cold handles, and I've got the no brand there. These are probably the older skillets, to be honest with you. And then I've got some of these heavier ones that are made out of a heavier sheet steel that are also cold handles. This is a national number 80. This is a, let's see, it's 40 is the eight inch. So 60 is the 10 inch. I think the 80 might be a 12 inch skill if I remember right. So there's a 12 inch right there. There's one full of shield bugs. That's a national. There's a cold handle there. There's another cold handle back there. There's a couple of never breaks there. There's a national there. I mean, there's tons and tons of skillets here that I'm going to put on that site and just get them up there. And we're going to get rid of a lot of them. I've got lots and lots of them to go. I've got cowboy coffee cups from tin to enamel wear, and I got bucket loads of them. This is a really neat piece right here. This is a bush pot, an old bush pot that's got bat wing handles on it. Probably long before, you know, people were thinking about doing this in modern kits. So this is probably from the 40s, maybe 50s. If I had to guess, nice little flat bush pot that fits really well inside one of these six inch skillets. You got a nice six inch skillet, like let's say this cold handle right here. This would sit right down in that dude in a backpack really, really nice with some silverware and you'd be good to go. That's a beautiful setup right there, okay? So things like that, I've got some old spice shakers there. I got some old carbon steel spatulas. There's an old <coughs> Boy Scout. Bridgeport hatchet right there in really, really good shape. Handles in really good shape on it. It's not cracked or broken or anything. We've got lots of lids, different types of lids for skillets from, you know, different types of grater lids to the safety pot lids. We've got lots of bowls and plates made out of the gray granite ware as well. I've got some brown. I've got some brown plates down here at the bottom, and I've got a brown coffee pot somewhere out here as well. And I've got some old cowboy enamel wear ones. This Nesco still got the label on it right here. Still got the original label on it. So it hasn't been used very much. It's a nice old cowboy coffee pot right there. And plenty of cups to go with it. So I've got, and look at this pile of Civil War era and World War I, World War II type silverware. This, this right here, is, this says US 19 something on it. I can't really read it from here. But this is World War I stuff here. There's a set of Boy Scout nesting utensils right there. This is matching Civil War stuff right here. Civil War cutlery that's got markings on it. This stuff was all made in the 1800s. There's a lot of it here. There's a brass penny spoon right there. Those are fairly rare. There's a U.S. Navy spoon right there, probably from Vietnam. I've got tons and tons of silver. There's a nice silver filigree penny spoon style spoon right there. There's another really nice Civil War penny spoon right there. So I've got lots and lots of this stuff to sell. I've got, there's two more of those U.S. spoons from World War I era. A couple forks there that are fairly old. You can see those. But I've got tons and tons of this stuff. And then I've got, you know, old antique vintage shotgun cleaning rods. I've got cleaning kits still in the box. I've got small tackle boxes. I have lots and lots of stuff to put on this Etsy store over the next few days. All right, guys, like I said, you know, I've got a bucket load of work to do, but I have to catalog each one of these items, price each one of these items, and understand, you know, what it's going to cost to ship them approximately so I can kind of add that into the price so that you get free shipping with the item. And I'm going to attempt to get a lot of this stuff up on Friday, provided I can get it cleaned up, cataloged, what I'm going to clean up, cleaned up, cataloged and priced and get it photographed and get it on Vintage Camp and Trail on Etsy. That is my store on Etsy. It's all vintage gear. I'm going to stay away from the military surplus. I used to put some military surplus on there. I want to kind of stay away from that as much as I can, except for the really old stuff like the World War I, World War II, silverware, possibly some mess kits. I do have a couple World War I mess kits laying around here too as well. They're called the meat box. And I've got silverware to go with them that will kind of match that. So I'll probably put a couple of those sets out there together. But I appreciate you guys just 
walking through some of this stuff with me and looking at what I've got. You know, a lot of people ask me, where do you find all this stuff? And I have guys that find it for me that will bring me, you know, piles of things to events and things like that. Say, I've got all this stuff, you know, give me one price on it all and I'll do it. I also, you know, pick constantly at estate sales and antique malls and rummage sales, things like that. Anytime I see them, I stop. And I'm in there looking for just the right stuff at the right price that I can make a little bit. There's a little bit of meat left on the bone and I can get some really good vintage gear in your hands. Like I said, if you're looking for a cold handle skillet and you ain't been able to find one, I got plenty that are going to be on there this weekend. So just favorite my site, subscribe to it, however that works on Etsy. I think it's a favorite thing and then they notify you when new things go up. And we'll get this tough catalog and get it up. And I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, friends. And I'll be back to another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.